good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live, 9 December 2021. We are slowly but surely reaching the end of this year. I can't believe that I'm actually saying those words. I hope that you've all kept well and that you are ready for the last few days of this year to make memories and to also absorb 2021. Lessons that we've learned throughout this year and something that we can take with us for the year to come. Today I'm here to inspire you to create something beautiful and a lasting memory with your loved ones during this festive time. Um, I have a very blank canvas behind me. I must say before I continue that you all are invited to my house every evening Yaku will bribe for you. The only thing that you need to bring along is 10 boxes, some newspaper, bubble wrap and a marker because we need to pack up my house. Very soon we will be moving and you can guess to where. Um, guess here, let's see who has some inside info. A very exciting journey for our, for our family and um, especially for our children. Yo and lots of nerves together with this process but overall excitement and thankfulness that we can endeavor this journey and this adventure. Today I'm going to share some inspirational fun ideas to create a very classy fun way and easy way of setting a table but these techniques can also be used on a furniture piece, on decor items, um, on a wall surface so it doesn't necessarily need to apply it, be applied only to a table setting. Okay what we are going to start with is a raw piece of wood and last night when I started to prepare for this session and I must give credit to Yaku. He cleaned my mess, he washed the paint brushes because we realized that most of the things were already packed away. Um, so thank you Yaku for all the assistance. Okay, I have a blank piece of pine wood aboard in front of me and I am going to start by applying it. Many of you might have seen this but what I'm also going to try and do is to share some decor tips and ideas with you how to incorporate different colors and how many colors to use together. Okay but that later. For the technique it is a raw piece of timber. It is original um, Vaseline, so it's not a water-based Vaseline product, it needs to be oil. Choco is water-based, so everywhere where the Vaseline is applied, Choco won't be able to grip. Water and oil don't mix, so I want to create an easy way um, of a distressed, sanded look and feel on my surface. I apply the Vaseline long strokes and very random and make sure it's a generous amount of Vaseline and also ensure that you haven't applied Vaseline everywhere because there need to be places where no Vaseline is sitting so that the paint can actually adhere to the blank pieces of wood. So it's a generous amount of Vaseline, random long strokes and I'm using a brush that I'm only using for Vaseline applications. I will wrap this brush in some glad wrap, reuse that glad wrap and then reuse this brush as well. I don't need to ever wash it. I'm using now a clean brush. Dip it in matte black and this is predominantly the color that I will be using today. So dip it in the matte black. What you can also do to avoid contamination. There are three things that contaminate paint. Water, a dirty paintbrush and air. I'm now painting on top of Vaseline. So contamination can occur if I don't use up all my paint soon because of the oiliness that I, that might be on my paintbrush and I'm now dipping this paintbrush in my paint jar. I paint a lot so my paint doesn't get time to contaminate. So pour out some paint for you when you do a project just to avoid contamination of any sort. So I'm 
painting on top of the Vaseline. Here you can see where the oil interferes with the paint. So there's a lot of Vaseline and that's quite normal for this technique to happen. So you can very quickly see where the Vaseline is sitting on your surface. I'm using matte black, but remember, you are going to use a color of your choice. The reason why I've selected matte black is one, it was one of the only colors I could find after packing up my house. Two, it creates a very classy, sophisticated table setting. Black is a beautiful, classy color to use on a table setting. The reason I also selected black is I'm working on raw timber, raw wood, black and some greenery is a beautiful color combination to create warmth, sophistication and a classy look and feel. So once my board has been painted and one coat is more than enough, if you work with a different color and you do want to apply a second coat, just allow for your first coat to dry before you start applying the next, next coat. Next, we will have to rest our underplate. I have one that has rested already and the paint is dry. And what I'm going to do to remove the Vaseline is I'm going to use a paint scraper scrape and very quickly and easily the areas where the Vaseline was applied will be removed so that you create a sanded worn finish on your surface. Also a technique that can be applied on a varnished piece of furniture to create a different look and feel. As you can see, I move my scraper in two directions, left to right and up and down. Because you will remove different pieces of paint by moving your scraper in a different direction. Just to make sure that I remove all the greasiness left behind by the Vaseline, I take a 80 grit piece of sandpaper, it actually can be any, any grit, and I'm just going to sand. This also contributes to the authenticity of the, of the technique, so that you get and see something that really looks old and worn, and that you can see some wood coming through. Okay, under plate is done and you can sand as much as you like for as long as you like, depending on how many people you are inviting over for Christmas, or for the festive season, or for a birthday party, any celebra celebration. Okay, under plate is done. Next, let's just move that out of the way. I have prepared myself here behind the table. Micey loves my food. Something that I'm taking with me for 2021 is I learned to cook. I'm going to share a recipe with you later. So just hang in there. I discovered last night that the only piece of cardboard I have is the backing of my stencil. So I'm going to show you a creative idea to create a sleeve for your cutlery. Crystal is removing my dessert from the table for Maestro. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm placing my stencil onto my cardboard. I cannot, Maestro, leave alone my table setting. Go, Maisie. Go. Kijk eens zo. So I'm using the backing of my stencil. 
I'm making use of a stencil brush. I've dipped only the edge of my stencil brush in some matte black. I'm using my tablecloth. You can use anything to remove excess. And I'm very lightly going to stencil this pattern onto the backing of my stencil board. So never throw away. It can be a beautiful card, gift cards, tags, gift tags. We are just moving my hard end desserts out of the way. We've already had a right guest to your move. Say again? We've already had a correct guest to where you're moving. Really? I'm just looking for the name technique. Melanie Hughes. How even did you know, Melanie? <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, I'm stenciling very lightly on the backing. And I'm going to stop here so that you can see the next process. So little paint, I'm not trying to do something that's solid. I'm just trying to create different shades of black on the leaves here and there. Do we need a tamer for Maestro? Maestro? Kijk ga ga hoe moet ek focus. Maestro, hou jy van ons tafel? Huh? There are so many people that ask for Afrikaans um, tutorials and it's not that I'm rude not doing it that way. We really have people in Switzerland and Australia and New Zealand also watching. So it's just to make sure that everyone um, gets attention. What I'm doing next is I'm simply folding my board in four. So you can easily do this for four people at the table. I'm just going to prepare for one. I'm cutting a square. So where I fold it, it can also be gift cards. I'm folding it in half again. Just make sure I do it neatly. Right. I'm going to punch a hole in the corner. Just make sure that I punch it correctly. I'm going to take, you can use ribbon or rope, doesn't matter. I put it through the hole, both ends of the rope or the ribbon, put it through the hole, and I put the ends through the loop. Cut it smaller, and I have a sleeve for my fork and knife. So that's the next item that will be added to my play setting on the one I've prepared last night. I also included a eucalyptus leaf in the ribbon. So there I've included my eucalyptus leaf and I have a beautiful holder. And you can even write a message inside, a personal message for each person to take with them for for the year to come okay next so something that i also realized is that i didn't have black candles last night um but i had gray candles but the gray wouldn't necessarily go with my black table setting so i'm using an enzyme brush and i'm using a candle this candle is not really very greasy on the outside. You can see it has a more of a matte finish. And initially when you paint, it looks oily, but with a second coat, it covers completely. So I'm going to change the color of my candles for my table setting. 
You can use a bottle at the end just to put it in so it can dry. So generous amounts of paint. Paint your candles. I'm not painting that section so that it can burn nicely when the candle is lit. Chalk is water-based, so your candles, you can see on our table setting, the candles burn beautifully. Maestro has settled down, so he's sleeping next to my chair. Okay, candle is done. We have a beautiful black candle for our table setting. This was a ginger beer bottle, plastic bottle on the table. I also use one of the bottles um, is actually a plastic water bottle that we just filled with water and put a eucalyptus leaf on the inside. Next to my house there's a felt and in the felt the eucalyptus grow freely so you're welcome to come and pick your eucalyptus when you come for the bride with your boxes. Okay, candle is resting. Once the first coat has dried you can apply a second coat. I'm not going to do it for this session because you know now how to paint a candle. Next, something that I'm taking with me for 2021. The first time Kaylee went for her high school interview, the headmaster asked her, what takeaways do you like best? And she said McDonald's and I was so, uh, not McDonald's, um, Nando's free advertisement to Nandas and I was so um, relieved because I think that's a healthier option for, for fast foods and then he asked her what food that your mom cooks do you like best and she said do you know my mom she can only cut cucumbers um, but Yaku can braai so our children do eat every night but something that I have learned for 2021 is how to cook so this will be our festive meal. Let me share this recipe with you while we add it. You need a spoon. You need some fruit. So you fill your painted tuna tins that you've washed properly. You don't need to do the washing. Let your husband do it or your partner and then you just paint them. The painting part is the fun part. How I've treated the tins before I've painted them with choco is I clean them well on the outside only with lacquer thinners, allow for my thinners to dry for 40 minutes, and then I paint it with an enzyme brush. Okay, so fruit in my painted tuna tins, it can also be um, your um, tomato paste tins, if you don't eat fish. Next, I'm going to pour my custard. You don't need to make your custard, you get them in this form, already made. And then to match the color of our table setting, I actually do have hand sanitizer here. To match the color of our table setting, I'm going to add the Swiss roll right at the end. And then you can also add some old brown sherry. So I cut my miniature Swiss roll in three, add it at the end and you have a lovely eucalyptus is food safe no. so. okay. and you have a beautiful christmas dessert okay with your painted tins so don't throw your tins away upcycle next <laughs> So first use them, never throw them away because you can wash them crystal and reuse them again and again. So I'm just going to clean my table and then share the last piece of inspiration with you. 
and that is napkins. So for the color, like I've mentioned earlier, I do want to share some tips on how to incorporate different colors together. Safest, if you are not used to working with color and you feel uncertain, is to select three colors. For our place setting, we have wood as a color, because that's something that's predominantly on our surface. So that's the largest part. It's on the table. It's in the color of the underplate. It's in the brown of the paper. Um, so that's our major color. So usually in the decor world, we will say that's 70% of your color scheme in your space. Then I have black, that's the second color. In our space, it takes up more or less 20%. It's the color on the underplate, it's the color on the stenciling. And our third color that we are using is the greenery. It's 10%, it's just um, such, we use it subtly on the plants, in the, in the dessert, on the table in the jars okay so my napkins did not go with my color scheme so I decided to dye them with charcoal so this was what the color looked like before white and this is what the color looks like now and let me show you how so first step and something that I haven't done um, beforehand is you actually need to wet your fabric first. When it comes to dyeing of fabric, make sure you work with a natural woven fabric, not something synthetic. So you wet it first. I haven't done it. Will it be a problem? I'm not sure. Let's see how it ends up. But first, the reason why you need to wet your, your fabric first is so that the colors flow naturally and evenly in your damp and on your damp fabric. I have mixed water, warm tap water and Alvis mix together. And this is the color that we use. That's predominantly it's the browns in our table setting. And to dye our napkin to just go um, with the rest of the setting. Nowhere I have white, so white would have stand out like a sore eye. Would have stood out like a sore eye. Like a sore thumb. Like a sore thumb. <laughs> I'm getting better at this, at this language. I'm doing my best. Okay, now I'm taking my napkin and I dip it in my paint and water mixture. The amount of paint that you've mixed, mixed in your water mixture, mixture will determine the strength of your mixture and how dark the color will be. So if you feel it's too light, you just add more paint. Taste, do a tester first. If you feel it's too dark, add more water. I have actually pillowcases that I also want to dye. Okay, now I'm squeeze out excess moisture. I open my napkin and I allow for it to dry flat. So I have a, a towel next to me and it will rest here and dry. I have one that has dried already. Just wanna clean my hands. So here's my napkin that is dry already. And I have ironed it so that just most of the greasiness has been removed. I'm going to use the same stencil pattern, ooh, sorry, that I've used on my cardboard, only on the edge of my fabric. And some matte black, and once again, a stencil brush. So matte black stencil brush, stencil, and your fabric. I dip my brush in my paint. Now we're working on fabric. It's not as easy to hide mistakes on fabric as on other surfaces. I remove excess and also on the edge where paint loves to sit. 
I press down, you can use masking tape. I don't have it here. You can also bring it along with the boxes because we need to close them. And I move, so I press down with my free hand and I move in circular movements. More or less the same technique that we've done previously on the cardboard. We've gotten a hello from Switzerland, from Daisy. Ah, oh, Daisy from Switzerland. It's lovely to have you with us. I have a big smile on my face now. And we have a question from a Jakub Fosler. What is Jakub Fosler asking? <laughs> I have a question. Who washed the tins and helped paint the top soles last night? Do you have any energy juice for me to start on the next recipe you have heard this <laughs> Yaku. Red Bull. Everything. <laughs> Red Bull, Bio Plus Coffee. I also have someone in this house that makes coffee early in the mornings. I can give you his number mm -hmm. and then um, we can ask him to assist you with some energy juice. Strong coffee for a starter. Yaku said today he's so tired. He can't keep his eyes open. And I said, Yaku, how do you think I must feel? We've done four TV seasons this year. We've done half another TV season. We've written a book. We are doing lives <laughs> every Thursday. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a jam-packed year, but to do something that you love and that you enjoy makes everything so much easier. Then you can fill your days with plenty of, of projects and excitement okay so i'm just finishing this and i do want to show you what can be done to fix any mistakes so very lightly and i'm just doing the edge you can do the entire surface of course it all depends on the look and feel you want to create you can also incorporate more than one color um, if you are working with a different color scheme and you do want to incorporate something else so if for instance and this is something i realized quite recently on fabrics you do want to hide something you can give it a light sand i just want to look for a clean piece of sanding paper because i've sanded quite a lot last night so if you want to hide anything, make sure you don't damage your fabric, but you can very lightly sand your fabric to hide any mistakes. Look there. So this comes, solutions comes with making mistakes and finding ways of fixing them. So look there, how stunning this is. And now I'm taking my napkin. Let's put that side. Just put it nice and neat. Take a piece of rope. Just want to create some order around me. Take some rope. Oh, it should have been longer. Bear with me, sorry. I realized when I made a knot earlier today, it needs to be longer. And I have something that fits my color scheme. I didn't have to buy something new and it still looks classy and beautiful. And you can also, of course, put a eucalyptus leaf in here. Let's just find one. if you want to and there you have something with all three colors that our table setting is made out of okay i think this most probably will be the last live session for the year not meaning that we won't be here on thursdays we just won't be um here in person but we will sh still be sharing something that we've done behind the scenes or some inspiration with you I need to pack and I need to finish 2021, make sure that all the orders are on their way to their homes. I want to 
and you know me, the tears are always sitting very close, so I'm going to compose myself. Thank you sincerely for a great 2021. I think this morning, when I started preparing for, for today, in terms of what I want to say, I realized it's been a year and eight months that you've been part of my life. And during some of the book um, launch sessions, I've met some of you. And with every message I'm writing in our book for you, although I might not know you in person, I try to make every message personal. And I hope that that message means something for you. But from my heart, and my heart means everyone else's hearts, at the Choco Paint Factory and the Choco Paint family. Our stockers and everyone, we want to thank you sincerely for being part of our family, for being part of our journey. Thank you that we can freely share our lives, our ideas and our inspirations with you. Um, it's been a great journey up to now and we are so looking forward to 2022. Let's see what 2022 um, holds for us. Be a force of loving kindness. Enjoy if you have time with family and loved ones. Enjoy the time with them. Be safe, look after yourself and let's make memories um, in this last bit that's remaining for 2021. I sincerely appreciate everyone and happy holidays. Bye-bye.